If a railway track runs over a bridge that has expansion joints that move more than a few millimeters, the track must be able to compensate for this longer expansion or contraction. On the other hand, the track must always provide a continuous surface for the wheels traveling over it. What do I mean? Are you aware that there is an occurrence in the railway and contraction due to thermal expansion and contraction of materials? But you should know that the occurrence does not have a specific time frame. Although we still don't know if the railroad has an expansion joint, we will analyze it and get the perfect answer in today's video. So, what are expansion joints? There are compensating elements for relative movement and thermal expansion in pipelines, containers, and machinery. They are also referred to as compensators. Depending on the application, they are made up of tie rods, connectors at both ends, and one or more metal bellows. Axial, angular, and lateral expansion joints are the three fundamental forms of movement that are used to distinguish them. Expansion joints are used in many industries, including the production of energy, paper, chemicals, water treatment, and oil and gas. Anywhere there are thermal movements or vibrations in pipelines, expansion joints can be used. However, an expansion joint or movement joint is an assembly designed to hold parts together while safely absorbing temperature-induced expansion and contraction of building materials. They are commonly found between sections of buildings, bridges, sidewalks, railway tracks, piping systems, ships, and other structures. Let's get deeper. What was the reason for expansion and invention? The pioneer of railway expansion in India was Governor General Lord Dalhousie, who formulated the plan to build a network of trunk lines connecting the major regions of India. Investments in railways were encouraged by government guarantees, and as a result, a string of new rail companies were established, paving the way for rapid expansion of the rail system in India. The railway network then extended to the areas that would eventually become the modern states of Assam, Rajasthan, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh as several sizable princely states joined the effort to expand railways by developing their railway networks. The railway network's route length increased from 1,349 kilometers, or around 838 miles, in 1860 to 25,495 kilometers, or 15,842 miles in 1880. The majority of the network's growth was inland from Bombay, Madras, and Calcutta, the three major port cities. Under the direction of British engineers, Indian businesses completed the majority of the railway construction. By 1900 in India, a significant portion of the system's robust rails and bridges had been constructed. In 1910, the rapid expansion of railways was the most important infrastructure development in India during the British Raj. Starting on 16 April 1853, when the first railway passenger train started its operations, the Indian railway system expanded to become the fourth largest in the world. Emil Witzemann was credited with creating expansion joints in 1920. German Reichspatent No. 367-185, dated July 29, 1920, was the patent for the first flexible metal tube expansion joint that he sought in 1920. From a technical perspective, this forerunner of modern expansion joints is a sizable, flexible metal hose that is pressure tight and has a definite, limited range of motion. The metal bellows took the role of the metal hose or flexible metal tube concept as the primary functional component in the 1930s. The structural foundation of contemporary metal expansion joints is still this design principle, metal bellows with connecting sections. However, records now show that a factory was founded by Henry Ammann and Co., a factory for metal cartridges in Karlsruhe slash Germany in 1872. In 1898, a patent was applied for flexible metal tubes with beading folds, convolutions, production of bellows and metal hoses of seamless corrugated tubes for industrial applications, was therefore first ever manufactured by the company now known as the BOA Group. So, expansion joints are placed in concrete to prevent expansive cracks formed due to temperature change. Concrete undergoes expansion due to high temperature when in a confined boundary which leads to cracks. Expansion joints are provided in slabs, pavements, buildings, bridges, sidewalks, railway tracks, piping systems, ships, and other structures. One way to define an expansion joint is the pre-planning of the gaps intentionally left in the construction industry. Why then are these spaces purposefully left in the construction? 
These gaps are left to protect against potential deformations caused by things like shifting ground beneath high-rise and large residential plan buildings, fluctuating temperatures, static loads generated by horizontal or vertical elements placed on top of it, and material movements like expansion, shrinkage, and shortening that make the structure less susceptible to earthquakes. Numerous materials are utilized in building, and each material reacts differently to temperature fluctuations. As a result, each material has different elasticity, shrinkage, and expansion behaviors. Because of this, the intentional expansion joint gaps that have been left in the constructions are crucial to the construction's static integrity. Then, using the proper expansion joint profiles, these gaps are sealed. Expansion joint profiles, which guard against physical harm and aid in properly filling gaps, prolong the lifespan of buildings. The effective delivery of products and commodities across great distances is greatly aided by train lines. In contrast to other forms of transportation like roads, train tracks don't appear to have these expansion joints and contractions. The reason behind this lies in the unique characteristics and engineering principles associated with train tracks. Train tracks are designed to withstand heavy loads and endure various weather conditions while providing a stable and safe platform for trains to travel on. Unlike roads, which experience continuous traffic flow and are subject to frequent expansion and contraction, train tracks are not affected by the same factors. Train tracks are made of steel, a material known for its strength and stability. Due to the rigidity and durability of steel, train tracks do not require expansion joints to account for the expansion and contraction caused by temperature changes. When metal is heated, it expands, and when it cools, it contracts. This expansion and contraction can cause road surfaces to crack and become uneven, leading to potential hazards for drivers. However, the forces exerted on train tracks due to temperature changes are comparatively minimal. Train tracks are constructed with allowance for thermal expansion, taking into account the expected temperature variations in the specific region they are built. Engineers calculate the expected maximum and minimum temperatures and design the tracks accordingly ensuring that the expansion and contraction are managed within the limits of the track's capabilities. Train tracks are not entirely made of solid steel. Rather, they are constructed using a combination of materials. The track consists of a steel rail, which is supported by wooden ties or concrete sleepers. These rails are carefully designed to optimize their performance, durability, and safety. Train tracks require regular maintenance to ensure safe and efficient operations. Maintenance activities include inspecting tracks for defects, such as cracks or wear, and repairing or replacing any damaged sections. Additionally, track alignment and leveling are adjusted to enhance stability and reduce the risk of accidents. Train tracks are designed to withstand a wide range of weather conditions, including extreme heat, cold, and moisture. Engineers consider the anticipated weather patterns of a particular region when designing and constructing tracks. Special measures, such as adequate drainage systems and anti-icing techniques, are employed to enhance track performance under challenging weather conditions. Train tracks may require periodic alignment adjustments to maintain their stability and ensure safe train operations. Over time, factors such as settlement, weather conditions, and traffic loads can affect track alignment. Regular monitoring and adjustment of track alignment help prevent accidents and reduce wear on rolling stock. Projects are designed with a focus on minimizing destruction to ecosystems and protecting natural resources. Measures such as proper waste management, erosion control, and habitat preservation are incorporated into the construction process. The design of curves and train tracks involves careful calculations and considerations. Engineers take into account factors such as train speed, the desired radius of the curve, and the train's ability to navigate the curve safely. Proper alignment and super-elevation techniques are utilized to ensure trains can safely negotiate curves without toppling or derailing. Do you find this video helpful? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell if you wish to see more videos like this one. See you in our next video.